Hello and welcome to Perspectives, where we'll take a deep dive into the issues of the day and where we'll take at people's, a look at people's opinions on such issues. I am Ruth Osime. And I am Ola Torreira Majakodumi Oniru, here for another timely episode of Perspectives. Today, we're going to have an in-depth conversation on the trials along the journey of motherhood, from miscarriage to natural deliveries to IVFs to surrogacy to adoption. You are watching Perspectives on Arise TV. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Perspectives here on Arise News. The journey to motherhood for most women is a thing of joy, regardless of the usual transformation and oftentimes discomfort that comes with the pregnancy. But this is not the case for some women. Anyone that's been in the place of wanting a child or wanting another child knows the disappointment, the pain, and the loss that you go through struggling with infertility. Secondary infertility, secondary infertility is also painful but not as bitter a pill to swallow like that of primary infertility. Child adoption is now becoming a growing culture in the country as more people tilt towards the practice. Prior to now, adoption wasn't really a well-embraced tradition. But as beneficial as these choices are, each one comes with its own challenges. In Nigeria, adoption is usually a long and tedious process. Some problems adoptive families face may include possible lack of knowledge about the child's biological health history and difficulty deciding when, if, and how to tell the child about being adopted. But it's all worth it in the end if you follow the right protocol. And for those who have done it, it is one of the most life-transforming experiences that happened to them. Another option is surrogacy. Surrogate motherhood refers to a situation where a third-party female is commissioned to carry a pregnancy on behalf of another couple. She delivers the baby and hands the baby to the commissioning birth parent at birth. As generally observed, surrogacy agreements in Nigeria are based on simple contract terms. Although there is no law or statute regulating the act of surrogacy in Nigeria, its contacts and agreements remain enforceable. There are different experiences with IVF, adoption, and also different types of surrogacy, which we will discuss further today. Very well said. <clears throat> Wishing happiness every single day to everyone, especially today to our mothers. I did not know how beautifully affectionate a mother's heart is until I became a mother. I did not know how important the role of motherhood is until I became a mother. I did not understand the depth of trials of motherhood until we came together as mothers and as mothers-to-be and shared our stories, pure and undiluted. From miscarriages to adoption, from breastfeeding to bottle feeding, to circumcise or not to circumcise, the trials of motherhood are many and every decision is extremely delicate. After all, we are springing forth human beings the next generation of leaders who deserve to be healthy, happy, and strong. Today's topic is a very important one, as over 70% of all global maternal deaths occur within Sub-Sahara Sub Africa. Why Africa? This is mostly due to the excessive inequality gap in wealth causing maleducation and low access to quality healthcare for the poor who constitute majority of the population. Some of the causes of complications many women face include the use of unsafe abortions and poor health practices leading to high blood pressure, infections, and other issues. Every day, approximately 800 women, mostly of low-income countries, die of pregnancy and childbirth-related ailments. In moving forward, to reduce the trials women face, it is vital to avoid unintended pregnancies and avoid abortions. It is also important that leaders across Sub-Sahara Africa focus on increasing access to quality health care, especially for those in unavoidable situations. It's important that we prioritize healthy nutrition and minimize environmental toxins. More will be discussed during our usual discussions, but for right now, let's watch the special report. Perspectives will be right back. Mothers, the sacrifices they make for their children can't be quantified. The sleepless nights after childbirth, 
up to the kids becoming adults. Let's face it, sometimes motherhood is just plain hard and finding joy in motherhood can be even harder. There are beautiful days when everything goes according to plan and then there are days when things fall apart. Challenges of motherhood today involve postpartum depression that can severely impact a mother's mental health. Without various taboos revolving around postpartum depression, most mothers do not express their feelings or thoughts to people around them, which can prove to be harmful both for the baby and the mother. Most mothers reflect on the glory and beauty of motherhood, and while it truly is a beautiful phase of life, many stories are filtered to mask the challenges of new motherhood. Of course, there are exciting phases where mothers plan what clothes to buy, what toys their baby would prefer, and various other things. We only rarely hear about the struggles, which makes it all the more important to bring the unspoken challenges of motherhood into the light. Your life will always revolve around your kids. On a lot of days, you ask yourself if sleep still exists. Also, dynamics of relationships change. The path of the pregnancy, the test of patience, amongst many other aspects of motherhood. Today on Perspectives, we would be discussing all these and more. These kids are so cute. Mm. You know, having, having multiple blessings must be every woman's dream come true. Absolutely. But the focus here is not about motherhood. It's the mm. journey to motherhood, mm -hmm. trying to get pregnant, mm -hmm. trying to have a child. The obstacles that you face when you do IVF so many times and it fails, or You're when right. you try surrogacy and it doesn't work. When you go through miscarriages. You go through miscarriages and right. what have you. So yes, it's the joy of motherhood is already there for all to see with these beautiful babies that we saw on air. Mm. But today's discussion is not about the act of motherhood. It's the trial and the process of trying to become a mother. You know, and I feel sorry for a lot of women, especially if you're married, where they put pressure on the husband, they expect him to have another child outside. A lot of people don't realize that the pain or lack of, child, of childlessness also affects the man as it affects the woman. So I'm hoping that today we would learn from those who have walked that journey, taking that mm. path, and how they came out of it. Absolutely. Supportive husbands do contribute yeah. to the journey of healthy babies. I think it's so important that it's a journey whereby people are supportive to women because women do go through a lot in terms of the entire process of childbirth. We've seen how complications can emerge um, from, you know, surrogacy to IVFs to and even eventual sometimes, adoptions. Sometimes it's, it's even the man's fault. Mm, how so? Low sperm count or what have you. Okay. And then some men don't want to accept that. That in itself is also tedious and yeah. painful. You understand? And I don't think it's a journey that a lot of women should go through, but a lot of men do go through. And at the end of the day, thankfully, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And it's just having the perseverance, the patience to see it through, you know. And then if you're not blessed with a child, look for a child to love. Inherit your children, mm -hmm. your other children, or mm -hmm. inherit your, your nieces. Just show love in the life of with people that. who are around you so that even if you're not a biological mother, you still play the role of a mother in people's mm -hmm. lives. But have you heard that in Nigeria, the law prohibits women from adopting male children? Oh, is that true? And men from adopting women children. Oh, that's interesting. But we should ask our guests that. It's I a didn't very complex law because women give birth to both male and female so telling a I woman she can't is, properly though. raise i mean i think there are ways to limit what can happen but avoiding women from they said if you're not married if you're a single woman no but i know single no women have adopted you. children and it's male children also. i don't know about male yeah. funny enough now that you mentioned it i don't mm -hmm. really know anybody that has adopted yes. a male child mm -hmm. you know but it's a good it's a good angle to bring it up when our guests come in mm -hmm. because it'd be good to know why but although i can almost not necessarily say approve, but I can almost see the logic mm. in that. I especially don't. when it comes to men and adopting daughters. Especially mm. if, if there's no biological tie. I mean, you've heard horror stories mm -hmm. about men sleeping with their stepchildren and what have you. I'm yeah. not saying that's what So happens. there should be checks and balances, not well, there like should be checks and balances. No, yeah, there should be checks and balances. But the truth of the matter is that 
a child, every child deserves deserves to have somebody that would in a love loving them. home. Every child Absolutely. deserves to have a, somebody that plays the role of a parent mm -hmm. in their lives. Absolutely. You know, so I, I I hope that as our guests come in, they will give inspiration to those who are going through this journey mm -hmm. because you're never alone. You think mm -hmm. you're alone, but you're not. There are many like that. Right. So we hope you know. Absolutely. So we're focusing will on too. IVF. Adoption and IVF surrogacy. IVF is even the most painful because there are those who have done it seven, eight, ten times. I've heard mm. many horror stories of IVF, but really? like I said, the most prominent thing that you have to have is faith and prayer. Mm. In but what's that thing. recommended part if the man has low sperm? Well, like, like I said, I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but I mm. know that there have been instances where the man actually has a low sperm. I don't know what the solution to that is. Yeah. I guess a medical person is the one that can give us the best mm. answer for that. But I know some of them is so low that it really can't provide much. Right. So, the, but there must be a way that you can walk around these things. Bottom line mm. is let's just find a way that everybody can attain and achieve their goals. In of this motherhood, process. happiness in motherhood, absolutely. Anyway, we're heading for a short break, but stay with us because when we're back, it will be time to get to the business and with our distinguished guests. Princess Dayo Odukoya and Duton West. Perfect will return in just a moment. Don't go anywhere. Duton West is a practitioner with over 25 years of experience in events management after turning her hobby of organizing events into a business by setting up her company, Wonderworks. Today, she manages a team of dedicated professionals with creativity, innovation, and technical expertise. Resulting from health issues in her earlier life, Dunton focused on research in nutrition as a pillar for well-being. She is now a certified integrative nutrition health coach. She runs a wellness practice called Refreshed Healthy Living, where she offers consulting services, seminars, products to help people create and maintain healthy lifestyles. After 19 years of marriage and an era of facing fertility issues, Dunton and her husband are now blessed with a child of their own. Their journey was long and hard, but today she's here to share her experience on IVF, adoption, and surrogacy to give hope to people going through the same path. Dutoy is now being joined by Dayo Dukoya, who recently took an early retirement with experience spanning over 25 years in accounting, corporate finance, and management. Aside from corporate for her corporate profile, due to personal circumstances, Odukoya chose to follow her passion and is now a certified and holistic fertility counselor and vice president board of trustees of Para Family Foundation and NDO. This vision of hers gave birth after an eight-year journey of infertility. She is now blessed with a beautiful daughter of her own. The foundation has worked very closely with Lagos State in helping women with painstakingly long but rewarding process of adoption, which has now given people the various options available to tackling infertility. Great to have you, both of you here. Thank Black. you for having us. Okay. Thank you. Now, there's something that uh, my co-host brought up when we were discussing earlier on, that adoption if you're a woman, you can't adopt a man, and if you're a man, you can't adopt a girl. Why is that the case? I think after going through um, the necessary you know, processes of getting um, adoption through the Lagos State Ministry of uh, Social, uh, Youth and Social Development, some singles may apply, like you said, men or women apply when they are, uh, you know, um, have been approved but they may not necessarily give them a male, I mean, a boy to a male or a girl to a woman because of abuse. What do you mean? If you mean a girl to a man? A, a girl man to, to a, a man, sorry. A girl okay. to a man or a man to... A woman. Yeah, because they are singles and there may be an abuse. Okay, there may be an abuse. There's also a very long process. Yes. Towards the, the, which, you've, you've said that before. So please explain the process from beginning to end and how long it takes to adopt. So talking about how long, you cannot really put, you know, months or years to it because even from our foundation, we have families that have gotten their approval for like two years and they're wow. still waiting. And it's not about the process alone because after the approval, you're going to be, I mean, you have, they have, you have to go searching for the baby in any of the orphanage homes. That's a qualified orphanage homes or Who registered. Who gives the approval? 
No, the the Lagos State will give approval. You take your approval letter and go seeking for a child Which in ministry orphanage homes. In Lagos State? Ministry of Youth and Social Development. Okay. So they have a department on the social welfare. Okay, but what are the that. what are the prerequisites? Like, mm -hmm. if, for instance, somebody wants to adopt, what are the tests? What are the things that you need to do? Is there counselling? Are there um, 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 physical tests? What are the things that need to be in place for you as a person to qualify as someone for, who wants to, who wants to okay, adopt? Okay, so there is um, a process. Start from the so beginning. I have to start from when you submit your application. You know, of course, you agree with your spouse. That the next step, you are assuming exactly. that the person is married. Yes, assuming that the person and, is married. And the person is not. Yes, they still they the still, same process. Yes, it's the same okay. process. So you submit your application, and of course, after then they will invite you for pre counselling okay. to know why you want to adopt and all of that. How long does that take? It doesn't take as long as your you know the the time that um, you wait before you are called is actually the one that is you know a bit long. But once your application goes in, they will call you. Okay. And okay. I think they've really improved in the last few years. And I must say that Lagos State is one of the states in Nigeria that you are sure that whatever process you went through in your adoption journey, you will get, you know, there won't be any issue. Okay, so the first stage is pre-counseling. Yes, pre-counseling. Then, of course, they would invite both, you know, for interview. There's difference between counseling and interview. Because at the interview, that's when they will now deep deeper into why you want to, you know, adopt. And of course, after then, your files and everything, your document, they will request for your document. Documents document. of what? What kind yes, of documents? Yeah, you have your birth certificate, your marriage certificate. If you are married, you know, your job, are you employed or unemployed or your, you know, uh, business owner. Of course, they should be able to establish the fact that you can take care of your life. Mm -hmm. That's why that, and of course, your bank statement for okay. six months, your tax clearance. Okay. Yeah, I think that's... that's Any basically. inspections? Yeah, of course, they will come for inspection. That's why okay. I was trying to list from submission to mm -hmm. pre-cancelling, pre uh, then the registration. And of course, after that, they will come for home assessment. Okay. They want to know and see the environment where you want to take care. Mm. Or because that's actually the objective of the unit to be sure that the child you are taking, you know, you are going to be in responsible. Safe yes, in a safe environment. And of course, there's a, there's a payment to be made mm. to Lagos State. I'm not a Lagos State staff, so I won't be talking about how much, mm. but you can go, I mean, the office is open. It's public information. Yes, it's public, Lagos State. Yes, it's public they information. Can, it's even on the internet. Right, you so know? you can tell us. But of course, I may not be able to say, but the last time I checked, it was 80,000 okay. that mm -hmm. you, you pay. So, of course, after then, you come for post counseling. Then you know that you are about getting approval once you have paid. So, you come for, you know, post counseling, and that is when they will educate you mm. on how, you know, to bond with the child, on your, what you are expected to see at the legal, because you're still going to go to the family court, because that's mm. the final stage. So, they're going to educate you on all of that. And then, of course, they will now issue you the letter go. There's a part you missed, I think, because I remember sure. I, I spoke to Duton, okay. and she talked about also tests. Okay, yes. The blood tests. Yeah, okay, medical tests. Just to this. know, I mean, yes. psychiatric tests, you know, your, to know that, of course, you are medically fit mm. for a child to live with. Okay. So they will have that as well. And then usually your letter of approval, which, of course, you will take to any orphanage home, registered orphanage home in Lagos State. You can't take the letter in Lagos State to Ogun State. Yeah. Or if you are not resident in Lagos State, you can't adopt in Lagos State. So even all the people around the borders, you can't adopt in Lagos State, like the people in Moway or whatever that, mm -hmm. you know, on Lagos State. When you speak about orphanage, taking the, the, the certificate or the approval of orphanages, are you allowed to go to as many you, as yeah. you want until yeah. you find what you're looking yes. for? Because parents say, for those who have done it, said that when they saw the child, they felt an instant connection mm -hmm. with the child, and that's when they knew that that child was for them. You know, so I'm wondering that you're allowed to go to as many as as, as many you want. orphanage that are registered under Lagos State with your letter. Yeah. Okay. And then, are you allowed to choose the age in which you want the, the child? Yes. Even okay. in your letter, you have stated that you want, you know, maybe a baby. Between one year, three, or you know, 
And of course, there is a difference between adoption and fostering. I hope you know. Yes, mm -hmm. of course. Okay. Yes. And you, so you successfully adopted? I didn't job? adopt. Like okay, I said, we have an NGO. We have, you know, members that have okay. gotten their letters and we're still searching, you know. Okay. So. But Dunton, you went through the process and it was a different outcome. Yeah. You want to share yours? So we went through everything you said. We went through that process. We went at the um, evaluation, medical evaluation and everything. And then we went to various homes. And what I found was that most times they say it was that the, after we've put in an application and you keep on checking, oh, there's no baby, there's no baby, there's no baby. And for me, I kind of found that quite strange because, I mean, there are children and you see children yeah. in these homes and you wonder why, you know. So somebody did explain at some point that maybe they're still going through the court cases because some of mm -hmm. them are children that they picked up on, mm -hmm. you know. But I, it would be nicer if the home said to you that, Oh, we're still going through a process with these children to be for them mm -hmm. to be cleared. What's that process, though? What's that court process? When, so especially I, when they're found. I, I honestly don't know. Okay, transitioning so, so them into, to transition yeah. into, into being adoptable. legally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I guess that's mm -hmm. it's making somebody that somebody doesn't come and say this child is mine. I, I, right. I'm assuming no, it's that necessary I actually. Know. Okay, but mm -hmm. then what would be helpful for for someone like mm -hmm. me? who's trying to adopt them. If the home tells you that, so we, you can see children, you see children right. playing. We'll take a break now and okay. then we'll be back right back. Mm -hmm. We'll see you soon. Don't go anywhere. Grab your cup of coffee and join, join mm -hmm. us again. Okay, Dutton, you had something to ask, Dio. You were talking about the process of um, adoption and the obstacles, the bottleneck. Yeah, yeah so, so you, when you go to homes, you see all these children, you see these lovely children, calling out to you and you want <laughs> yeah. to grab them, then they say to you, there are no children to adopt. So for me, for someone like me that's going through that process, I'm wondering, but I can see children. Now you're saying there's a process, we've, we've heard that it's a process, but that process needs to be communicated to the person that wants to adopt a child mm. because don't forget that already your emotions, emotions your mental, and then you're seeing Absolutely. children and you want, your body saying, I, I want that I want child. Mm. You see and you've been through a long process. process. Why you that that step? So I think that should be added to it as well because mentally, I couldn't comprehend it mm -hmm. when I'm seeing children. And, and sometimes, when you, particularly when you go to a particular home, you get attached to a the child. Children, as you see the as, child. As a child. Yes. And then they tell you you can't adopt a child. You know, so I think... One of the things that we need to tell people that, that there's a process. Yeah. So you're mentally prepared. Even though, like I said, I must say we went through a lot of um, tests and it was very rigorous. Yeah. Mm. And I, I, I appreciate that because mm. then you know you can shift out who is who and who is mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. But the last stage, when you think, okay, I have my letter, mm. and I can just go to any home and just pick up a child. Mm. It's, it's not, not as simple as that. It's not as simple as that. And, and it you doesn't get there, and then your heart's broken, yeah. and then they tell you the child is not adoptable. Did they you? tell you there's no child from multiple adoption centers? They didn't so, tell you to come back in one month, come back in two months? They tell you to come back as much as you can. Mm. So they don't say to you, within two weeks you can adopt a child. No. And then you go on a list. Because there are people before you. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So but like Dio said, the yeah. waiting list can go from anything from three months to three years. Yes. yes. I mean, mm -hmm. once you have your letter, yes, at that point, that is like 80% work for legal mm. state. Mm. It's not left for you to go around with your letters. Yes, the children will be calling us. In fact, there are some children that are under protection. They are not for adoption. Why? So, yeah, maybe the parents have issues or they are mentally, you know, their family okay. says, so some mm -hmm. come under adoption, I mean, under protection. Some are because of abuse. I mean, mm -hmm. there's one of the orphanage homes, we've been there several years, and these children are just growing there because the parents were not, you know. Okay. So there are some that are just for protection, they are not going to be adopted. And for babies that are picked up, they have to go through so very it's good to know thorough, that. It's good to know thorough that. and thorough. But anyway, because yeah. we don't have, you know, I really want us to maximize the amount of time that we have. Another option is IVF. And um, Duton, how many IVFs did you say you did? 14. Wow. 14. Wow. 14. 14. But what you said something about killer cells. What does that mean? So, I mean, for me, um, I kept on doing the IVF and they kept on saying, oh, embryo is beautiful, womb beautiful. If you're a doctor, they talk about having three linings in your womb. That's it's perfect for, as of, uh, for pregnancy. Mm -hmm. But each time the embryo was transferred, I never got pregnant. 
So um, somebody did mention that we might have killer cells. So what are killer cells? Killer cells are um, maybe like your white blood cells. Let me just put that in layman's term. Who thinks that the embryos are um, foreigners? Okay. And they mm. come and they attack the embryos. Mm. So they kill the embryo even before anything happens because they, have, they assume, the body's assuming that it's a foreign agent that's coming to attack your body. Mm. Because that process of, uh, it's a very, it doesn't happen in most cases, but mm -hmm. it's very rare. Did How you did narrow you down the causes Sorry. of Antibodies, this? Antibodies, they call it. How did you feel? Mm -hmm. you, I mean, you did it 11 times. You 14. Said. 14. 14. 14 times. How did you feel where time after time after time it didn't work? Because doesn't your state of mind also oh, yes. help? In our, doesn't, I don't know whether your state of mind also affects the outcome of the results. Is that possible? Is there a correlation between both? I'm not sure because I'm not a scientist, but what I did, I would say is that for each IVF, it's a different, you go through different mood swings mm. and different outcomes. I think I got to a stage where I just felt that, okay, you know what? We've done everything. And mm. as, as the doctors would tell you as well, when they've done everything, they've, trans, mm -hmm. they've done the transfer, it's not up to God. Did you oh. analyze a cause and effect relationship? So sometimes we need to go back and see what may have caused these killer cells. Is it genetic? So what can cells we? Has to be found first. So mm -hmm. for my case, when I there's a specialist hospital that does a test for killer cells. They don't do that right. in Nigeria. Okay. okay. So I traveled, and well, fortunately for me, when they took my blood, I don't know what happened. They congealed, mm. and they couldn't do the test. But and at then, what point did you do this test for the killer cells? At what number I of IVs? Do you to get to the cost? I think about uh, maybe five, six. Or okay, so you don't like five, six previously? Previously or so. No, no, or maybe even more than that. And when a friend mentioned that she was going through the process and she realized, well, they told her she had killer cells. Mm -hmm. wow. And um, she now said to me, have I tried that during the test? Okay. So I thought, okay, why not? We've already, we're already in this journey. Mm -hmm. We might as well do it. So we went, I did a test, but it couldn't get to the lab because if my blood congealed faster than they expected. Wow, okay. Can you tell us what age group you were in? I know sometimes they say the longer you wait for motherhood, the more riskier, the more complicated it gets. What age group were you in at this time? The so risk was my age. <laughs> <laughs> you can pass it to 25, don't worry. It's only so, for 35. So in a few months, I'm on 54. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, you absolutely don't look it, but okay. <laughs> you know, so, but I mean, I guess the journey really starts when you start, when you, don't, when you get mm. married the first time, you obviously don't, don't think you won't get pregnant. Yeah. You know? So you, you wait a few years, then you start thinking, oh, okay, maybe something is wrong. So how many yeah. years was this your journey of 14 attempts? 19, 19 years. You tried from, from, you've been at it for 19 years. We've been at it for 19 okay. years before we had a daughter. What I want to ask mm. about adoption, um, Dio, before we go to the other topic, is that, I've heard of situations where parents don't tell their children that they're adopted. I've also heard of situations where some of these children found out in schools that they were adopted and the kind of side effect it had on them. Some of them, it, has, it was very traumatic. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know whether in terms of where do you, how do you know, if, is it right to tell your child? And if so, how do you go about it? Do you think they owe a moral obligation to tell the child that they're adopted? Yes, the adopters or the ad adoptees or adopt the parents, the, <laughs> the adopters, the parents now. Yes, it's very important they let the child know as okay. as early as if they are, if they adopt if they adopt you know maybe an, a, an, a infant? an infant maybe by four or five you should start letting the child know because adoption is about giving. Mm. You know, when you get pregnant yourself, it's about receiving. Mm. But adoption is about love. It's about giving. Like so that. you should let the child know. Mm, their story. Yes, I, I also went it. through IVF for my baby. And, you know, I went for um, a conference in the UK, you know, about infertility and all of that. And I saw this book, you know, picture up, you know, telling your child that they came through IVF. And I bought the book. And my child was about, maybe about seven then. And I sat yeah. her down and I started telling her. In fact, we were both shedding tears. Just to let her know the journey I went through before having you. Mm. Because I really want to give you love. Mm. 
So you so know it's imperative. Yes. Yeah, so it's, it's very key you let the child know because it will be more dangerous on the emotion, psychological, you know, depression and all of that if the child gets to know outside of the home. Yeah, but it cannot be an easy task. Otherwise, it will not even come into play as to whether right. or not to shelter the child. Because mm. I know that some parents, or what I've heard, that some adoptive parents find it very difficult to tell their children that they are adopted. But I, I just think that the, the risk of not telling is far more. outweighs yes. the, the, the risk, yeah. the risk, the risk of telling. And then you, I, do talk, you think a bit what's differently your take, on what's that. Your take on that? Mm -hmm. I, I think, I think again, you have to look at the child as well. I think each, each um, situation should be based on the home okay. and the child as well. Okay. What if you tell the child that you're adopted and the child thinks that, oh, my parents didn't want me and mm. goes through. So it has to be a balance. And I think we'll have to look at the child's mental well-being first before you tell the child. I like that. You know, not mm -hmm. because... It is the right thing to do, or society says you must. You have to think about the child. It shouldn't well. affect the yes. child negatively. Yes. Yes. Yeah, but that, that, that doesn't that also de 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 depend purpose. on the, the mode of delivery and on how you tell the child. <laughs> some some child are very some children are very emotional. But it's not worse if the child now finds out <laughs> outside if you don't tell the child. Uh, so that is a balance. You find the balance. Yes, you find you find the basic. balance. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that we've spoken about that, what about surrogacy? Because you were saying that there are different types of surrogacy. Can you please educate us on the different types of surrogacy? So surrogacy basically, um, in the layman's term, is somebody else carrying your baby. Yes, that's the very, that's what we know. Okay. And that's um, surrogacy where somebody else carries that is the child. That yeah. child. Then the surrogacy can be done in different ways as well. So either the man's sperm and a donor egg or okay. a donor sperm and the woman and, and the woman's egg. Okay. Or the couple's egg in a in, um, same sperm. Same sperm in, in a surrogate, in a gestational surrogate. That's the person that carries the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Or both or man's sperm, sperm and woman's, woman's egg. Sperm. Yeah. Yes. But you've also said that um, there's a line with surrogacy. We've heard of instances where the surrogate mother, for some reason, gets too attached to the child and doesn't want to now give the child to the parents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's also, uh, 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 there's also advice that lines must be drawn, a legal, legality must be put in place, so that such incidents don't happen. But you remember you and I were discussing, and you spoke about your friend who got involved with the surrogate mother, mm -hmm. and then the surrogate mother came and wanted to start seeing the child and bonding <laughs> with the child. So what do you advise from your experience? Do you advise that you don't see, you don't communicate, and it's a real, you know, so for our surrogate, for our surrogate okay. um, we had well, we had meetings with her, um, virtual meetings with her, and when it came to birth, I was adamant that she would not even see the baby or touch the baby because that's when the bonding starts, yes. mm -hmm. and that's because based on the advice my a friend had given me that she had when she had a baby mm -hmm. through a surrogate as well, she allowed the surrogate to carry the baby, mm. she allowed mm. the bonding, and the, the, the surrogate's husband called to say, please don't let my wife near your, near your home anymore, because mm. not only is it affecting her, it's affecting the family as well. Because she had her own children. She had her own children, children, children as well. Yes. yes. Mm. So when we, had, when we went through that journey, I was adamant that my surrogate won't see the baby. Won't touch it. Won't touch the baby. No affection. No, no there's nothing mm, at all. I mean, she did important. try because we're in the same hospital. Mm. And, wow. And we were actually wow. like two doors away from her. Oh, wow. And she kept on saying, oh, I want to bring something oh, for the oh. baby. Mm. And I was like, no. Mm. I mm. want, and she felt as if I was very mean. And I said, well, mm. I have a gift for you as well. Even mm. though we had signed contracts and we'd done all our legal beat mm -hmm. and everything. But I felt that she had, she carried my baby for nine months. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Tough one. Do you want to be the best partner? I wanted to be the first best partner, but then they would have screened us off as well. Because oh, so the technology okay. was like she would be on the other side because she had opted for cesarean. Mm. And I'll be on the other side so I can have the baby immediately. But then we, there were complications because she caught COVID. And wow. so nobody could go in with that but the doctors. Mm -hmm. And they were concerned about the baby as well. So nobody could so she was alone. But as soon as the baby was cleared and everything, she was and she kept on Say, okay, my, my daughter come in. I was like, nope. Mm. My daughter can't but what are the point. plans, what are the prerequisites that have to be on ground in terms of the welfare of the surrogate mother while she's pregnant? What are the things, who supervises her to ensure that, you know, she adheres to making sure that the best, taking, care, taking the best care of the baby 
is paramount. So there's an agency involved. So there are various ways. So some people go through surrogacy with just on their own when they know the person. We did. We tried that a few times when people had said to us, "Oh, there's somebody that's willing to do that." Mm -hmm. So we'd fly to one state and then the person won't show up. So mm -hmm. we did that a couple of times and we just thought, "No." So we went through an agency. So the okay. agency is the one that does all the legal papers between the surrogate and ourselves. Mm -hmm. the, um, you have to go to, a, so we did that in the States, in America, and you have to go to some states that are very friendly to a surrogate, like for example, California. So we mm -hmm. did that in California. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you know why, with all this, no. <laughs> with our surrogate, they were, we went, through, went to court. Mm. Just before the baby was born, we had to get the final judgment where our lawyers and our lawyers went to court. And that was where it was finalized that you have no link to this baby. Mm. Nothing. Why did you need to go to court? Oh, we, so it's part of the um, procedures Protest. in the state mm. of California. That, so that she won't come back, so that she won't come back in a, a few and years say, and say, this oh, baby I is see. mine. Mm. So it, all rights were annulled. annulled. Mm -hmm. And in the process of where she was pregnant, or she was going through this process, she had to seek psychiatric help. So we, yeah, she, was seeing, sure. she, oh, was, wow. she was she was being seen by a psychiatrist every month. Oh, wow. And we had to bear that cost. Hmm. Because she, but is a, that a prerequisite for every surrogate? You take on well, the medical I, I, costs? We take on the medical costs, we take on the, our, our feeding costs, our clothing costs. Because she changes, our body changes. Okay. So all that, we take on all the costs that um, is involved. Mm -hmm. Hold on to that, Dutton. Um, Yours mm. is a very inspiring story. We're going on a break soon and then we'll be right back. Stay with us. There are many women who go through the pressures from society and their pressure to have children. And, you know, there's so much going on at that point in time. And then when they adopt, they realize that, oh, maybe this is not for me. They don't know. They hadn't prepared for that motherhood process that comes afterwards. Are there checks and balances from the state, are you aware of, that protects the children? The children have a way of reporting situations like this that happens in their adopted homes. Well, like I said when I started, there are pre and post counseling. And uh, before Lagos they can hand over, they would have done all that is required to make sure that the child is going under protection and care, you know. So if all that has been done, but you know, pressure yeah, makes life happen. Yes, I see what out of pressure, they just want that child. Yeah. Society is pressuring yeah, them. Yeah, Society is pressuring but them. But apart from even the but pressure, when they get the child, apart from even the pressure, mm -hmm. what about if the child is being molested or abused? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Do you understand. And that is where giving a child to single parents also comes in. That's not fair because <laughs> the child no, is no, not no, fair no, to abuse, right. I mean, no, 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 abuse can come it anywhere. Can abuse can abuse come from anywhere. Come from anywhere Do you remember that doctor that was abusing um, some woman's niece? Some mm -hmm. medical doctor that was abusing some woman's niece. niece. So, yeah. you know, this, this notion mm -hmm. of married or single, it is the individual that we're talking about mm -hmm. here. Okay. And like she rightfully said, because that's a very good question that she asked, mm -hmm. that who do you supervise after the person the child has been adopted do you go ahead maybe for the next couple of years yeah, supervise for, yes the i think the, they do the follow up after the mother have child. given the child out they do follow up but like the environment we are you know i mean mm. Maybe to an extent, but not still. Uh, maybe the child is 18 years. No, no I'm not saying that. Uh -huh. I'm just saying the initial so, stages. They, as initial, yes, they follow up. So they do. They do. This follow up should be available for adopted children again. Exactly. Be Absolutely. Adopted. When you have a child, mm -hmm. you know, there should be a social worker, a health worker, mm -hmm. a case worker attached to you. So they start to the mother for the you know, child. There's a, there's because some law. mothers lose it after child birth. Absolutely. And yes. these are, these are Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Thank there's you. There's a law, child rights law in Lagos State. Hmm. And everyone, I mean, this is all about, you know, awareness. There's hmm. no much awareness about all these things. People don't even know that they can go on the internet and check this requirement out and how to go about it. We do a lot of, the, a lot of this, I mean, in our NGO. But, you know, I mean, if you have such, you know, um, um, abuse or whatever, there, mm -hmm. is, there is a unit, social welfare 
at the Ministry of uh, Youth and Social Development that you can report to. But this information are not just out there for us. You even said that there's no law. Is there any particular law concerning surrogacy and adoption in Nigeria now as we speak? Well, I would say no. Yes, discussion is ongoing, but there is no law. In so Nigeria. you're saying now, for instance, a surrogate, mother, a surrogate can decide that they want to come back to claim this child that she's given to the parents? No. Because there's a legal document at the process, during the process that they have to sign, a lawyer has to be involved and all of that. Of course, when a lawyer is involved and there's a legal document, you can actually go to court with that. But okay. there's no law in Nigeria yet. I want to ask, um, Dr. this process, surrogacy, IVF, adoption, is all physically, mentally, emotionally tasking. And sometimes you find solace when you are with somebody who has worn the same shoes or been down the same path. So I'm wondering, is there a forum here in Nigeria of people going through the experience you went through just to give each other succor and give each other advice and share experiences? Okay. Is there any forum like that? So after we had a daughter, we thought, what can we give back? And we started something called Butterflies, where it's a forum where people come in. And, you know, sometimes you want to vent. Yes. Sometimes you want to just cry, you want to speak, you don't, <coughs> and nobody's there to listen to you. So what the forum does, a butterfly does, is that it gives you a safe room where you can just scream, talk, cry, mm. say anything you want to say. Because, I mean, for me, I remember that whilst we're going through this process, there's a particular clinic I went to, and when we got there, IVF can be like... Um, a manufacturing fa factory mm. where next 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 okay who's mm. next but when i when, she, when i got in there to this um, hospital i was ex to be quite honest, i was expecting that okay you do the test they tell you this and tell you that but the lady just sat down and said so i was okay today let's talk and i was thinking talk mm. i flew all the way from nigeria <laughs> to talk you know mm. but then she was like no just you know just talk let's so what how are you feeling what do you think you know I started crying. I wasn't expecting to cry. I started crying. And I just felt that as I was talking to her, I felt a whole weight mm -hmm. lifted, you shoulders. know. I didn't feel pressured as I was before. Mm -hmm. She gave me things to, I could meditate on, I could listen to, and she, they gave me a number I could call anytime I wanted to talk. Then afterwards, so in the afternoon was when we started the process of IVF, started doing the checks. And when we did, I came back and I said to my husband, I said, you know, in all the clinics we've been to, this has been the best. And I really wish we could go with them. But we had, because of my medical issues as well, we had issues connecting with my clinic in the UK and, and the clinic in the States and the Nigerian whatever. America is full of those who need <laughs> processes. So we couldn't get a common ground and that was why we didn't go with that clinic. And for me, that stayed in my mind for a very long time. So when we had a daughter, we thought, what can we give back? Mm. And we started this group called Butterflies. Lovely. You have to register because it's very, we try and make it as intimate as possible and mm. very close-knit because you're coming, we want you to be a safe place where you can share. Like and um, nobody can, so people say to you, oh, it's okay. It's not okay mm -hmm. because you're not in my shoes. Yes. Okay. You know? I want to ask, like that. Mm -hmm. both of you are married. There's also, you know how society is, pressure on the man. I don't know whether either of you, did you experience your in-laws telling your husband to go and look for, uh, go and have a child outside? Because sometimes some of the pressure, mm. apart from societal pressure, is also pressure of in-laws. Mm. So can you both maybe give us expenses as we round up? Whether or not you experienced any of those, uh, you know, um, I, 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 well, I, I can't say that we're telling him or we're not telling him because I didn't experience it. You know, so I didn't experience a case where my in-laws were saying, mm -hmm. oh, I didn't hear. Let me mm -hmm. use that. Let me, <laughs> let me use that word. Let me phrase it properly. Because I, they may have been telling him, but I doubt, mm. but I don't know. So I didn't, it, it wasn't in my face. Mm. What about you, Daryl? I never. Or even if you mm -hmm. haven't experienced it personally, okay. have you heard of situations where of things course. like this happen? Yes, of course. I mean, in our counselling session as well, because we do counselling for, you know, families that are waiting. Uh, yes, some of them, you know, goes through it and then we try and counsel and then um, 
most times we always want the couples to come for counseling together. Yes. So once we do that, we're able to balance, you know, certain issues out. But for me, for the eight years of my waiting period, I didn't ex experience any of such. And uh, that is where it is very key and important for you to marry your friend. Mm. So that mm -hmm. when you are going through it we together, talk about time. you can go through it together. Thank you so much, girls. Very woman. beautiful to share yeah. your story, <laughs> for sharing this very interesting very beautiful. Um, mm -hmm. stories with us. And we hope that those watching us, the audience watching us, will learn a thing or two from your experiences. And just will probably reach out to you for your butterfly NGO that you're running and also you Dario. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having It's a very me. sensitive topic <laughs> and very you. inspiring too for those who have watched us tonight. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you. Anyway, as you know, family isn't always blood. A parent isn't just defined as one who biologically makes the child, but rather a parent is a person who raises the child and plays a pivotal role in their upbringing. And every child without a biological parent or family is entitled to have a caring adult in their lives. Always remember that life is a learning curve. Mm -hmm. If it throws you big stones or hard balls, you bounce back up. Mm -hmm. You've been watching Perspective. You're here with me on Arise News. I am Ruth Osime. And with me, Ola Torira Majekudumi Oniru. A well-accomplished doctor said that the poorest people make the most unhealthy choices. To everyone out there, don't be limited by conceived wealth. Poor or rich, making healthy choices is in our brains and our hands. The healthiest choices are usually the most natural and the most free. Africa is blessed with so much nature. Blossom with the basics of nature. To every woman out there, know your body, love your body, protect your body. Thank you for watching Perspectives. Thank you to our special guests for joining us today. Have a great weekend and see you all very soon. Goodbye.